Hello, welcome to another video and today I'd like to make this card. I'm using um, two different stamp sets. Um, one is the lily pad lake using the crane, the lily and the water ripple thing. And the sentiment I'm using is from Peaceful Place. The thinking of you with gratitude for your part in my journey. I just thought it was a pretty peaceful looking uh, card. So that is going to be our card today. And I have a lot of it already prepared because um, there was a lot of cutting and a lot of coloring and stuff. So let me put the card aside and uh, we'll get Started. And let me tell you what you need because we need a bunch of stuff. All right, so for the card base, you will need a piece of Tranquil Tide cardstock, and this measures eight and a half by five and a half, and it is scored at four and one quarter. Then you will need for the front. A piece at four by five and a quarter. Then you will need another smaller piece, and this measures three and a half by four and three quarters, and it's going to go right there. And this will be the piece with all the ripples on it. Then you will need a piece for the inside, and this measures three and three quarters by five. So that's your front. And then you'll need uh, a larger piece to do your um, your stork and uh, cut out your uh, ovals and your little uh, stamp that on. So you will need your layering ovals. And I used the scallop and the circle. I mean the plain and the scalloped, these ones for the, um, what color is that? Tranquil Tide and the, the white. And then I used the second uh, largest stitched one. So we need that one in, in the white. And then we needed the plain one in the white. And we needed to stamp the stork in Memento Black. So, um, we can do that now, just so as, um, you see what I'm doing. Right, so stamp your stork. Just make sure you have a big enough piece of paper in the white to stamp. So stamp your stork. Let me put that aside. Stamp your um, lily. Right. I'll put that aside and that's all we need the black for and then we take that and we fussy cut these two out so I'm just going to take these and cut them off here right now so what is left with this white you take and you cut these two out right you have enough to cut that out so you take it, run that through your big shot, and run this through with a piece of Tranquil Tide. All right. Um, you will need to stamp, I'm sorry, need to stamp your sentiment thinking of you with gratitude for your part in my journey as well on that white piece of paper. I've already cut the stuff out, so I didn't want to do that here. So there's our stuff cut out. I didn't have any more Tranquil Tide. That's why I did it like this. I'm so sorry. I ran out of Tranquil Tide. Um, but you just take that and stamp it first because it is very close right here. So just stamping that first and then putting your stitched shape over top 
on here. Let me show you. Here, I can stamp this with the Tranquil Tide on here and show you. I just didn't cut all this stuff out because I already uh, cut it out and that was the last one. But if you put it right at the top, with just the T on the left and the G on the right up there, you will get it all in. Like that. It, it fits it all in. Just. So it fits perfectly. You don't want the bigger one. I think that's plenty big enough right there. I really do. Uh, I don't. I wouldn't do the bigger one. I think that is really quite big enough for uh, this card. I like the smaller inside piece. It's up to you. If you want a bigger one, you can. Um, but I like the smaller ovals. So, anyways, all right. So that was my reasoning for doing that. I only had that small scrap left of. Um, until I get my next order. So anyway, you have to fussy cut out your crane, which I have here, and that. So everything should be cut out now, right? So all you need is all this stuff. Put this aside. You will need your inks. Let's see what we have here for inks. We have Pacific Point, Bermuda Bay, and of course the Tranquil Tide. All right, for the colors I used um, in the watercolors, I have um, a tray of uh, these are really old watercolors. I've had them for uh, I don't know how many years, or so many years. And you can see they've still got tons on them. And I used them quite a bit, actually. So I used a gray and a black for the crane. And then a bluish green and a green for the, the bottom of the lily pad. And then an orange and a red for the flowery part on the lily pad. So we can do that. Let's color those right now. Just color it lightly. With the watercolor pencil, then take the, that's the gray, then take the black and just go over the areas that are, you know, kind of already got marks on it. Where you'd like it like a little darker. Then take your blender pen or if you do on watercolor paper, you could use an aqua painter. But I'm just using regular white cardstock. So I'm using my blender pen. And I'm just going to blend this in and it'll turn my stork gray. It's not a stork, I'm sorry. He's a crane. I keep calling it a stork. I guess it could be. You could make it whatever you want, huh? Oh. So that's how you do your stork, all right? And then you just kind of wipe off your blender pan, right? Now let's show you how I did this little um, lily pad thing. Just um, color it the bluey green. Because I wanted it kind of the same -ish color green as the, the background we're going to do. And I want some up there too. And I want it sort of heavy-ish. Because I want it dark. It's going to lighten up when we use the blender pen. And then I'm going to do the orange and red. Just splatter it, you know, all over the petals. Just put red and orange all over. And then take your blender pen again, and we'll start with the green. We'll just blend it in. And you can see it just smooths it out. 
so you don't see all those lines and scribbles I made anymore. It's all smoothed out. Then wipe it off on the side of your paper or a paper towel or something, whatever you have. And that's how easy it is to just do your watercoloring. I think that's brilliant. I just love watercoloring. So, there. We're all done with that. So we can put that aside too. Now, um, oh, I also have this punch here. We're going to um, do the inside with. I will have all the measurements and everything all the instructions again on my blog, okay? Um, I'm going to just punch the corners on this just so it has a little uh, pretty detail on it. I like just to put this on the, on the dark inside, you know, just so you have something pretty. There we go. So that is that. I have the name of the punch because you know I can't think of the name of things. I should write them down and while I have this I am actually going to glue it in while we got it here why not All right. no come on glue don't stop now there we go And you could have rounded the edges too. It has a corner rounder on there as well. It's a very pretty punch. You can make bookmarks out of it as well. And it's got like a hole. Really nice punch. So there. We got that all prepared. So now we can take our smaller piece that we're going to do. our ripples, the water ripples on. And I like to start with a lighter color. I don't think it really matters what color you start with. Wherever you're, wherever floats your boat, right? So just ink up your stamp and just start at the bottom. See this, um, it has a straight edge and then it has a wavy edge. And there's a die that goes with this. So, um, and it has a wavy edge, so if you were lining this up to go with your die, you would, you know, line it up. But we're not doing that, so we're just going to um, stamp. So, just stamp all up your page, like that. And that'll be good. I don't even want to make it too dark. If we have to, we'll go back over it. Uh, then I'll do the blue. And it doesn't matter, it's um, kind of all stamped off on there, so we can we don't have to clean it off, just uh, we stamp and oops. I might have to do this one a couple of times. Yeah. Stamp again. Stamp there. There we go. And now do the Tranquil Tide. That last one was Pacific Point. And the one before was Bermuda Bay. Right, so ink this one up. Probably have to do this a couple of times. Yeah. I just like it a little bit lighter at the top. There we go. I think that's good. That'll be good. All right. So we'll leave that off. Okay. Now I have a little sponge dauber here. I'm just going to... This edge is quite all right. But we'll just go over just a tad. And do the bottom... And we'll just do the top. There. Right. That's good. Now basically all we have to do is kind of put our card together. 
All right, we've got the inside done. So we will put our front on here, all right? Glue, I need to fill my glue up. Keeps puffing out air at me. There we go. Line up this side and the top and this side about the same size and your bottom should line up perfect. Oh, no, I have to move it over. Oosh, it's not going on straight. There we go. Now, if I lined it up straight, yeah, there. See, if you line that up straight, that should be perfect. Right, so we've got that on, and then you could put this on and layer that on. I think it looks like a frame, so I just like that big gap in between, right? So, make this even two. There. All right. Now we'll take this and layer this together. Just wanted a teeny tiny bit peeking of the white out there. And I'm not layering it because, I mean, uh, putting it on dimensionals because the card is uh, thick enough. Right. right. And we're going to put that up in the upper right. And we'll put our crane down on the bottom. His tail can stick out on the white. It's fine. Just don't cover up your J. And he can go near the bottom if you like. And then hit this. Um, could go over one of his legs. Or you can move it over. You could put two if you want. Like offset them. But I like it just like that. So let's just. You can place them down and then just pick them back up and glue them down. Jeez, I got a mess on my nice clean mat. It was clean 10 minutes ago, right? <laughs> Doesn't take long. All right. I started a... Um, I'll show you in a second to, uh, I don't even have it with me. Oh my goodness. Well, yesterday we had four people come over and we were making cards together and we were uh, donating them. We we're getting together with friends and uh, we're donating cards for a cause. Or two is the name of it, what I named it. Uh, a cause or two this time. Um, and these ones are going to Ronald McDonald House and St. Jude Hospital for Children. And uh, I just thought this was a nice card for like, you know, both um, charity organizations that we're doing um, have homes that the families stay in while their children are being um, taken care of. So, um, sometimes they're there for a while and they have events that they miss at home or their other children are being cared for at home by relatives or other family members or friends and 
they could send a card like this home to whoever's taking care of their other children or to whomever, you know, say, thinking thinking of you and thanking you or whatever. It's just cards for them to use for their needs. Um, you know, they may miss a birthday of someone or an anniversary or something special or just want to write and say, you know, I'm thinking of you and maybe write their feelings down and, you know, let them know what's going on. And I don't know. We just wanted to do some cards for um, a good cause. So our last um, event was in February and we did cards for soldiers or cards for heroes. And um, we did it for the month. And this one we're doing until August 4th. But this one is for two organizations. And uh, this was actually the first card I made. And so I thought I would do a video on this one. Because I thought it was such a pretty card. So anyways, that is the card. And I hope you enjoyed it. And this was actually inspired by one of my team members. She actually did um, the really small note cards. They're like. I think like three by fives and she made a set a gift set of them and put them in a bag and tied them and made a nice little gift set with them no sentiment or anything on them but the background the, the crane and this on it and I thought oh what a pretty little card and I thought oh I could do a sentiment on that and that's where I got the idea so thank you to Penny and um, I did thank her and I thought oh that was really a lovely card so Anyway, thanks for watching, and um, right now, Stampin' Up! has such wonderful specials. They have the buy three and get one free on the designer series paper. Check out those. They're absolutely beautiful designer series papers. They also have the special right now. If you become a, de uh, a demonstrator this month, you get a, a whole 10-pack of... Hold on, I have to show you. Over a whole family of ink pads for free. That's a $67 value plus your kit. Your kit is $99. You get $125 worth of products that you choose what you want out the catalog. Plus you get a paper pumpkin, which is $20. You can buy any products you like. You get this for free free shipping it's over two hundred dollars two hundred and fifty dollars worth of free products remember the designer series papers on sale uh so it's by three and you get another one free so i mean there's another deal it's like oh my goodness what a time to become a demonstrator it's a brilliant opportunity even if you just love stamping up products it's a good time to save money you're getting over $250 worth of products for $99 so sign up become a part of my team it's a great opportunity to save a lot of money and you never know you might love being a demonstrator and make it a great business all right well I have talked enough and I appreciate you watching and I hope you have a beautiful day and I'll be back soon with um, some paper pumpkin alternatives. So this month's paper pumpkin should be in my mailbox tomorrow. And you have a great evening. Bye-bye. Take care.